The removal of a wall from a building can be a difficult task. The first thing to ascertain before removing a wall is whether it is load-bearing. A note of caution at this point. Just because a wall is made of timber stud does not necessarily mean that it is not load-bearing. Professional advice should be sought at an early stage. Other factors that may affect the removal of internal walls are the lateral stability of the external walls if the wall to be removed is acting as a sheer wall or buttress. A method statement, including the method of temporary support, should be undertaken, which includes a risk assessment of the work. In many cases, works are commenced and the wall supported before it is realized how the steel will be inserted. The wall can be supported on acro props, strong boys, pins, and in some cases, the floor joists can assist in the support of the wall. In addition to this, an appreciation of the loads to be supported will be necessary to determine the amount of temporary support required. For example, the load on an individual acro prop will need to be assessed and the capacity and number of acro props calculated. The loads sustained by acro props are available from the suppliers, and these will vary depending on the length due to the slenderness ratio of the prop changing as the length increases. Some consideration will have to be given to the wall construction. For example, a weaker wall such as one constructed in lime mortar can be prone to progressive migration of loose masonry if sufficient support is not provided. It may be found that in such walls, the amount of support required is more frequent along the length of the wall than for a similar wall constructed in a cement mortar which has a greater bond. The following are typical beam section sizes for a single skin wall supporting a floor either side and a wall 2.7 meters above. The beams show different opening sizes from 2.5 meters to 4.5 meters in intervals of 0.5 meters for a floor span not exceeding 4 meters on each side of the wall. We have made no allowance for roof load but have allowed for a 4 meters ceiling bearing onto the wall either side. The imposed loads used are 1.5 kN per square meter for the floor and 0.25 kN per square meter in the ceiling for storage. We have undertaken the design using BS5950 and assumed that the floor joists offer no intermediate lateral restraint to the beam. The above loads are unfactored loads. There is a practical aspect to the design to ensure that the beam width is similar to the wall width, particularly if it is bearing onto a wall running parallel to the beam, otherwise the edges of the beam will be overhanging the edge of the wall. However, on the longer spans it has been necessary to opt for a wider beam, which can be hidden in the plaster to the sides. Interestingly, wider beams can sustain higher loads and for the 3.5 meters span, a 203 by 133 by 30 UB would suffice, which is a wider but shallower beam. It is also interesting to note that if we considered the floor to offer full lateral restraint, not permitted under the code, but a few engineers do allow this at their own discretion, then a 203 by 102 by 23 UB would be seen to work up to a span of 4 meters. This is a much more economical section than the 305 by 127 by 37 UB that strictly under the code would not be permitted. The bearing is also an essential part of the design, and pad stones are sometimes necessary to spread the load of the beam over a wider area of masonry. There are many factors affecting the design and length of the bearing and pad stone. Some considerations are provided below. What is the material of the wall on which the beam bears, for example brick, concrete block, a rated block? These have different compressive strengths that will affect the bearing. Is the bearing running parallel or perpendicular to the wall? Finally, one has to consider the load to the foundations, since a concentrated load may now be directed via the load path to the base of the remaining wall thus making a large load on a smaller area of foundation. This will have an impact on the bearing pressure, which may surpass the bearing capacity of the subsoil beneath the foundation.
This video is for guidance only and the design should be undertaken by competent and qualified structural engineers who will provide beam sizes, bearings and path stone sizes, depending on the circumstances.